During a time of turmoil and crisis at the height of the Iran-Iraq War, a chess prodigy was born in Tehran, Iran on May 22, 1985. He wouldn't know it at the time, but despite his dire situation, he grew up to become one of Iran's top-ranked chess players. Hello, I'm here with uh, Grandmaster Elshan Moradiabadi. How is it like growing up uh, in Iran? Uh, growing up in Iran, well, there was nothing to do, so <laughs> that's how it felt like. The economy was all in the hands of the government, and uh, they were controlling the uh, all of the uh, companies, and all of basically there was nothing. Everybody was using the same products. Everybody had to use coupons to get their uh, rations. Basically, if you would go to French uh, family, play, uh, friends, places, and stay overnight, it, it didn't make any difference because you would use the same kind of soap or uh, or shampoo in their place. When did you start uh, getting into chess and start playing chess? I was. It was right after the war, two years after the war, and uh, things started to be changing. So I saw my dad playing with our neighbor. So then he, he also had a friend who was a who was into chess. And he. And then Iran recruited a grandmaster from Russia at the time. His name is his name was because he is dead now. Yevgeny Vasikov. He was uh, he was pretty good at his best. At some point, he was top twenty in the world in terms of finery tape back in seventies and sixties. I mean, he he never did something big, but because he was one of those Soviets, who he could try, get the chance to travel and because. He was playing in all these tournaments, he could have a hundred team, but he never, for example, qualified from the Soviet Championship or something like that. Despite these constraints, Elshan had dreams, but it was never easy. The Iranian national team were all old men in their 30s and 40s because chess was banned in Iran from 1980 to 1988 as well. Wow. Because it was considered a mean to gambling and it was considered anti, anti-Islamic, so chess was banned. So when I started, basically there was no chess in Iran. Well, you see, when you're a kid, the first thing you learn chess and you start winning something, you, you want to become what? A grandmaster. I want to become a grandmaster. And then, and then the good thing is that here, oh, of course, you know, in the US, we say, of course, you can do it. You, everybody supports you, and that's it's beautiful. You never get traumatized over somebody laughing at you. It's, it's considered very, like, abusive if you just laugh at the child's fault or wishes. And uh, I, I learned over time that that's how it goes in the, in, in the Western culture. And that's healthy, you know, you don't grow up having complexes. I, well, I wanted to be something in chess and everybody laughed at me as a kid. The international master title is the second highest title in chess. But Elshan wanted to shoot for the stars and reach the highest level of mastery, the prestigious Grand Master title. They had international masters like before the revolutions in 76 and now it was 93 and somebody wants to become a grandmaster. Some people say, no, it's not happening in, in your lifetime. It's going to be so hard. Not possible. But again, nobody knows how the world changes, right? Uh, but I was, I don't know, if top, definitely top 15. Because in the in the world, uh, world youth when I played, I was, uh, my starting rank was number 10. Wow. But anyways, uh, I was in top 15, which is big for an Iranian, right? I mean, there's no chess, and then, then uh, another guy became a GM, and then all the focus shifted to him. However, this did not deter Alshan as he continued to put in the hard work and take it step by step. At first, I was a chemical engineering student at college. First year, I made it to the IM, quite a nice leap forward, and uh, my rating went to 24-36, and then I was playing in the college, back and forth, going to tournaments, coming back. Wow. It was not easy, and I couldn't make so much progress. The international master title requires a rating of 2400, while the grand master title requires a rating of 2500. And it is approximated that less than 0.00001% of chess players will ever reach that title. And then, uh, March 2005, I made it to the GM. Wow. Yeah, I was very lucky. They wanted to have a GM, and they didn't want me to be that person. But in the end, Elshan became the second Grandmaster in Iran, with one of the highest rating performances ever. So he says to those who are struggling, We should take a leap of faith. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Elshan. I'm Shonik Shivakumar, and this is the story of Elshan Muradi Abadi. <laughs>